Prior to PCB fabrication, a circuit design can be prototyped using different types of construction boards. This is often done by planning the design on paper, but some design software has the option to output to a prototyping layout. The layout of the design and the prototype are similar, but you have to consider carefully where components are placed. There has to be enough physical room on the board for each connection a component has. More connections require more room. It's important to keep a clean linear layout. Building a disorganized chaotic prototype makes fault finding or debugging much harder and slower. You will use two main types of prototyping board, breadboard and vero board, commonly called strip board. A breadboard has a plastic casing which has a grid of holes which have conductive rails with sprung contacts underneath each hole. These sprung contacts trap the legs of components or the stripped ends of wires. This means components of the circuits can be moved around without the need for soldering and desoldering. However, they don't have the mechanical strength for active use. The springs are part of a conductive rail underneath the holes. The majority run across the width of the board. The exception are the rows which run along its length. They're connected along the length of the board and are typically used as power rails. When prototyping a circuit, connection between different tracks is achieved using either wire or the legs of the components themselves. The separation down the middle of the board is for placing integrated circuits. Once a design has been tested on a breadboard, it's common to make a more durable prototype using strip board. Strip board, also known as vero board, is made of a resin substrate with copper strips on the top surface. There are holes through the board for soldering on wire and components. The holes have a standard 2.54 mm spacing between them. Strip board can be easily cut to the required size. If a notch is made on the strip board either side, it's easily snapped on the edge of a bench top. When deciding the size of the board to cut, remember to give enough area around components with multiple connections, space for connectors, and also to include standard items such as mounting holes, which will also need free space around them to isolate them from the rest of the board. When converting a circuit diagram to a strip board prototype, the copper strips are used as horizontal lines and wire soldered across the back to form the vertical lines of the diagram. It's important to bear this in mind when cutting the board so that you have the strips in the correct orientation. The copper strips can be broken by using a drill bit tool to cut through the copper. Care has to be taken when doing this to remove all of the copper or the break won't be complete. Equally, be careful not to apply too much pressure or the drill will cut through the board which can split it.